Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs through Maiden's Quest, which is a very quirky and very clever card game where players take on the role of damsels in distress who have decided to take matters into their own hands. Which is to say, they are done waiting for Prince Charming to come and save them from the tower. They're going to get out on their own. And I'm going to show you how it works today in a solo run-through. Although, before I get going, I strongly recommend you turn your subtitles onto the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done so, well, welcome to the tower, everybody. Although, not quite. We're not quite there yet. There's actually a fair bit of setup that goes into this game. First of all, you have to choose what princess you're going to be. And the game comes with eight different ones, and they all have different strengths, different special powers, and different, or most, for the most part, the same setup rules. Once you've chosen a princess, like Priscilla of Icehold, you have to build her half of the deck. Uh, she has an heirloom of a great axe. She's a tough princess. She's charismatic, plus five other health cards, and 14 random items, and uh, you take a dress. So her dress might be the sundress, or the classic gown, the working dress, the evening attire, armored attire, or royal gown, etc., etc. So she is trapped in a tower controlled by one of these bosses. And the number here indicates how tough they are. So uh, Jellyasta Jones, or Dim to Troll, or Turta Weddleson, and whichever one you choose. You choose, oh, the big tough dragon, Firemouth. And uh, so that's going to be a tough one. He has his own setup. There are 18 obstacles that are occupying the tower that Priscilla is trapped in. Uh, two level ones, or two level zeros, seven level ones, four level twos, three level threes, four, uh, two level fours, sorry, three treasures and four saviors, plus a special effect for the dragon as well. And then once you've collected all of these cards together, you shuffle them all up into a big deck. Now, I'm not going to do that right now, because actually I should say, I've already done that ahead of time. We're going to be playing through uh, Tatiana, who has been kidnapped by Mrs. Claus. And Tatiana here, she is um, very, oh, cunning. She actually has two cunning plus uh, some more health cards, her heirloom hooded cloak, and some random items, and the dress. She has the ballroom dress, which is kind of the nicest one. It's got two wild cards on it. And so her special power is she can pick locks, uh, which could come in handy. She doesn't have to worry about finding keys as much as other. So here's her, her hooded cloak and a bunch of other items that were chosen randomly that she'll find in the tower. And then there's cunning and cunning. And let's see, she also has some raw potential. She's tough, she's charismatic, she's pious, and she's got a little bit of magic blood in her. And Mrs. Claus, well, let's see. Prince Charming is the one savior. Coincidentally, Prince Charming is in here trying to save Tatiana, but honestly, he's more trouble than he's worth. There's a couple of treasures. We have no idea what they are. You'd have to flip the card over. And some bad guys. A butler. Yeah, an evil butler. Uh, orcs, forlorn lover, uh, goblins, zombies, evil consorts, and a couple of doors. Now, all of this stuff gets shuffled up, including the, the boss and the princess herself. They all get shuffled up into the deck. And of course, you need to do some very thorough shuffling here because everything was was all bunched up like that. So let me just go on ahead and shuffle it a few times. And to be fair, something you got to know, this is a game that actually has a fair bit of shuffling in it. So, and since all the cards are two-sided, doing pile shuffling or, you know, some shuffles aren't really going to be as effective as others. Uh, we'll just give it one more. Hopefully this will be good enough. All righty, and then we're supposed to cut the deck once. Hey, there's Mrs. Claus on top, but nope, she's somewhere inside. There's a goblin on top. And at the bottom of the deck, we put in the two rest cards that indicate how many times we have gone through this deck. Because we'll go through it, we have a certain number of times to make it through this to either find an exit or defeat the boss. All right, and... The deck is set up, we are ready to go. And now, the game wasn't kidding when it said uh, taking matters into your own hands because you play the entire game without a table. Everything you need is held in your hands. So you can play this standing in line or in a car seat or you know lying down on the couch or what have you. I'm going to try and show you how to do that without cheating and using the table. Although, every time you make it to the uh, end of the deck, you will have to reshuffle. And if you're like me, you'll probably need a table for that. But anyway, let's start going. Now, what happens is when you're playing solo, or actually when you're playing with any number of players, 
you start digging through the deck until you find an encounter. And I've started with an encounter right here, right on the top. We've run right into a goblin. But say the goblin wasn't. Say this chair. I happen to find a chair. I would ignore this. I would cellar it. I would put it at the bottom of the deck and keep on putting cards at the bottom of the deck until I ran into an encounter. We've run into one. Now, it's a level one goblin. And uh, I am a level one character right now. Or I'm in level one of the tower, which means I have to face it. If this were a higher level encounter, I could sneak by it unnoticed and just put it at the bottom of the deck. But level ones, I got to deal with. I have a choice. I can either fight the goblin or run away. And uh, to fight it, I will need to provide th any three uh, icons of either sword or cunning. Now remember, Tatiana is a cunning girl. And so I've got a better shot than average of actually pulling some cunning icons. So I think I'll fight. Now, if I didn't want to fight, I could run away. And if I run away, that means one of my next five cards has to be downgraded. Uh, although that may sound bad, it's often a very, very good thing to downgrade your cards. They might become more powerful temporarily as they get downgraded. But I'm not going to run. If I did, uh, I'm instead going to fight because I think... Uh, because of my character, I can maybe find some of that cunning. Now, if I fail, I'm going to take a point of damage. So let's see what happens. Whenever you face an encounter, you draw the next five cards. Or fan them out is what it says. You, you get a fan. So one, two, three, four, five. These are the five cards I am using to deal with this goblin. And as you can see, I have one cunning right there from my hooded cloak. But unfortunately, and, and I've got one sword. Hooray! But I need three icons of cunning or swords. This is not cutting it. Drat. Okay. Now, um... So, if I don't do something, I am going to lose one hit point. And that means uh, I've got my Tough card and my Charisma card. One of them, because they are my health cards, would get downgraded if I don't come up with something. Now, I do have an option. Oh, unfortunately, I've got this obstacle in my way. That's just clogging up the deck. And... So, this little uh, guy here means distract. If I want to, I can use my distraction to take any one of these cards and remove it from my, from my fan, which means I'll get to draw another one, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to distract, and of all, you know, I, I can't get rid of the uh, main goblin, but of all the cards that are in my, because this is, this is the cards in my fan, of all the cards in my fan, I'll get rid of this, because it's not doing me any good anyway. It's just blocking me. That gets cellared to the bottom of the deck, and now my fan only has four, which means I immediately have to draw back up to five, and so you can see I've now got my steel corset. Hooray! Okay, so things have changed a little bit. Now, unfortunately, I still do not have the three icons I need. I've got one, two. I've also got two cards that are Charisma. That's what this little symbol is. Charisma is not going to help me wi deal with this goblin. So I have still failed. But the Steel Corset I found has a shield icon, which means I can avoid this damage. So nothing ventured, nothing gained. I didn't pull it off. I didn't get any upgrades or I didn't get any armor. Now, I don't have to do that. I could ignore this and take the damage anyway. And what that means is I would have to choose either my Charisma or my Tough card and downgrade them. Downgrading from the good side means flipping over to the bad. Oh, actually, I should say, if my... If my um, if my Charisma card had been upgraded, so it's providing uh, to where I'm a leader, uh, downgrading would be coming down like this. Now, I'm already on the base level. Downgrading means flipping it over, and I get a broken heart. I lose this card. I effectively lose this card forever, unless I get lucky. I wouldn't want to downgrade that one. My Toughness, if I were to upgrade it, hey, I have three hearts instead of one. And if I downgrade it, hey, I'm determined. I haven't lost anything yet. It won't be until I downgrade again that the broken heart. So... Sometimes these things, when you downgrade them, they might give you an icon you want. In this case, I don't want to either lose my Charisma card or just get closer to losing my Toughness card. So I will use this shield and avoid the damage from the Goblin. So my first encounter was a draw. I fought him off to a draw, and now all these things, the encounter and my fan, get put at the bottom of the deck. And as you imagine, that means I'm getting closer and closer to the rest. So now... I've had an encounter. Hey, look, it's a treasure. Ah! Remember, Tatiana's cool special power is she can pick locks and open treasure, but only when she and a treasure are in a fan at the same time. She's no My Tatiana card is nowhere to be seen, so she's not ready to use her special power. So, what happened? Like I said right up front, if I'm not looking at an encounter, I start 
uh, basically discarding cards, cellaring them to the bottom of the deck. So, oh, hey, here's another goblin right away. Right again, I get to choose. I need the exact same thing. And again, I've still got my um, I've got my swords that are in there. And this game, I should say right up front, a big portion of this game is memory. A lot of people are going to think, oh, it's just all luck. But it's not. It's all about getting to know your deck. The first couple of times you go through your deck, you don't know what all is in there. You're just kind of learning what your strengths and weaknesses are, what items you have. So you can take e you know, educated guesses as to whether or not you can beat these. Because if I want, I could run away from the goblin. And that just means I would downgrade one of the next five cards. Uh, but instead, if I fight him, uh, I'll take damage, which means I have to downgrade a hit point, and that could be a much more devastating loss. I'm still feeling cunning. I know I've got my other cunning in there. Let's see if I can pull it off if I find that plus some sword. So again, I'm going to fan one, two, three, four, five. And once, ah, oh, that is more like it. I got my other cunning and I found my halberd and my jewelry case. I'm going to hit this guy over the head with my jewelry case. Okay. Because you have to imagine, I was stuck up in the tower, and it was all adorned for me to stay there for years and years, and you know the standard fantasy tropes. But I am uh, using this stuff. Although I'm not done yet. Now here's an interesting thing. There is the haste. If I had chosen to run away, because I think thought I couldn't beat this goblin, because there was haste, I would not have to suffer the downgrade. So that's nice. Um, but since it is here, you uh, when I'm actually encountering. If there were another encounter here that were weaker than the goblin, I could use haste to swap the goblin for the other encounter in the fan, and that might let me pull a win out of nothing. But as it is, I've already won. I don't need to worry about the haste. I've also got, as I can see, the um, the distraction. I could use that to uh, to basically dump one of these cards and draw another one. So that's really interesting. Because if I look, I can see down the hall, here, here's my encounter plus my fan. Down the hall, I can see next up is an evil consort. And so if I wanted, I could distract to get rid of one of these cards. That would bring the evil consort into my hand where it wouldn't really bother me at all because I've still got the icons I need. And this is a way for me to avoid fighting her because to beat the evil, evil consort, I need two charisma. I've already gone through charisma. I had one charisma card. It's already gone at the bottom of the deck. I don't know that I feel like I could beat this and I don't want to have to run away. So what the heck? Let's use this distraction to um, this to get rid of this pie. So it goes to the bottom. It's going to go bottom of the deck anyway. So now she comes into my fan, and if I needed to, I could use the haste to swap the goblin and her. If I couldn't beat the goblin, but I could beat her, depending on the cards I've got. But as it is, I've done that. I'm not using the haste. I can only use that once. Although there's one other thing as well. I forgot to mention the jewelry case. Increase if I want to increases my hand size by one. So that was another way I could have brought her in, or the, my fan size, I could have brought her in. My hand size is bigger than one if I want. I could bring this mace in as well. But that's going to be overkill. I certainly don't need it right now. Although, maybe I will bring the mace in anyway. Thereby revealing the next card is Tatiana. I can see I'm going to be able to use her special power later on. Although, ah, the timing might not be good because I've just used up my haste and my other, um, my other, um, oh, what is, what is it? Uh, cunning, my other cunning. All right, but so worry about that second. This is down the hall. This is my bigger fan and I've won. I've more than won. One, two, three, four, five, six. I totally squashed that goblin. And um, I'm now going to flip him when I beat, if, I, if I'd lost, here's the interesting thing. If I'd lost against him, I would have to take damage on my cunning, and I would have lost it. If I didn't have a health card in my hand, I would have to start digging through my deck until I found a health card to, to flip. But the goblin has been defeated, and nice. The goblin upgrades one of the cards in my hand and gives me a key that I can use later on. Although Tatiana doesn't need keys as much as the other princesses because she's a uh, picklock. But anyway, so he's been defeated. He's going to go back here. And because it's an upgrade, I see, and I'm not using this. I got rid of this evil contract. I just found a way to get past her using the special powers. I won't have to deal with her right now. Since I'm not feeling very charismatic, I might have had a hard time. So, of these remaining cards, I get to upgrade one of them, uh, which means rotating around to the good side. Let's see what they could all be, because I'm only going to upgrade one. And this is why I decided to bring my mace in, because I could upgrade it from two swords to two swords plus foresight, because it becomes the last mace of the sorrow. Or um, my skeleton key gives me, um, you know, it turns my jewelry case from a sword and plus one to a key and magic. I don't think I need that, because I already can pick locks. So I'm not going to upgrade that one. 
oh, my cunning becomes sly. I might do that so I can just keep on bumping up my cunning. But my halberd, which gives me this distraction plus sword, becomes a wild card when it's the Swiss Army halberd. Oh, those wild cards are nice. But look at this. Um, my bunny slippers, which were giving me that haste, give me haste plus a wild. I think that's the upgrade I want. So I'm not upgrading any of the other ones. They're all staying at their regular. I've upgraded um, my unicorn, or my, my bunny slippers to unicorn slippers. And the rest go back. And that was a very successful uh, encounter. Now, Remember, I'm supposed to keep digging through the deck until at the top of my deck I have an encounter. There's one exception to that. If I myself am at the top of the deck, I get to take it easy. This is when I get to relax and not have to deal with anything. When I'm at the top of the deck, I still fan out five. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect! Oh my gosh, you saw me shuffle this, guys. Uh, this is nice. Um, I get to use these effects. Although, there's no encounter, so I'm not in any danger. Although I could have potentially been in danger because there some bad guys do actually have hits up here, but that's only if you lose. I mean, I, so I was really in no danger. So what do I want to do? I could distract to draw another card into my hand, but the most important thing is Tatiana is up top. There's a reminder here. She provides cunning, and she gets to upgrade a any card that has cunning or haste. No! Oh no! Well, okay. So that's my problem. Uh, none of the cards in my fan have cunning or haste. So I'm going to go on ahead and use this holy book for the distraction to get, um, oh, I don't know, to, to get this raw potential out of the way, which then brings manicured nails into my deck. Hooray, and it has cunning, so that means I get to upgrade it. So my manicured nails are now perfect nails. Nice, nice, nice. So I've done that. Um, I've used that. Let's see, but also, I have to flip over here to remind Tatiana's power. Pick locks. If an undiscovered treasure is in the fan of Tatiana, discover it. There is one. So I get to discover this thing. I get to flip it, and it's a staff of power. She picked the lock. Normally, I would have had to have a key in my hand along with this to open it. But as And this is a two-double wild card. Very nice. This is a good first run. So I've used her upgrade. I've also used her special power to open a chest. That was the upgraded card. Um... Let's see. Although, yeah. Now, there's an interesting... I had one other choice. I, if I Say I had not been able to use the distraction to get the... Um, the what, what was it? The, the manicured nails. I still had another option for an upgrade. Because Prince Charming was in my fan as well. Whenever you are called upon to do an upgrade or a downgrade, you can, you know, can do it on whatever car is appropriate. But... A savior card like this, and there's a bunch of different ones. Uh, Jill the Viking, uh, Caster the Shifter, me, the Troll, uh, Magic Blast Megan, uh, Minister Samuel, all these different... Uh, you can always, instead of doing an upgrade or a downgrade, you can flip them. And the interesting thing is, by default, if I don't flip Prince Charming, he's going to stay left behind. I uh, say, hit the bricks, pal. We don't need you. And I just put him at the bottom of the deck. Uh, he does. He is charming, so he does provide charisma, but I don't. I, I don't really make best use of him. If I had wanted to flip him instead of my manicured nails, or maybe if I hadn't gotten that, then I probably would have flipped him. He would have then be saved. I actually save him. He came here to save me, but I could flip him to save him. And he becomes more powerful. He's still charismatic. Now he can create a distraction. But all of these saviors, they're kind of bumblers because they always create a downgrade. He has to downgrade a key. Now, I don't care. I don't have any keys. So I wouldn't mind getting that extra distraction, even if he would lose a key that I might have had, because I don't bother with keys. But as it is, I didn't need to upgrade him because I upgraded the other card that I got. And so everything, myself and all these other cards, they go back to the bottom. And now I keep on exploring. This is not an encounter, so let's keep going. Oh, oh, hey, here's a goblin. Okay, now it's any three. I know I've gone through both of my charm now. So I feel less... Even though I only need three icons... I feel less lucky, so I'm going to run away this time. Uh, um, you know, because I, I honestly, I don't really have my deck memorized. I remember I had two charms. I don't think I had any more. Um, I have used my hood, haven't I? I think I've already gone through my hood. Let's see here. I mean, this is kind of cheating. I'm not really looking. I just want to... Because again, this game, uh, there is a sizable memory quotient to it if you want to play well. I think my... Yeah, my, I've already used my hood. I've already... Yeah, I am not feeling lucky. I think this guy might beat me and then I'd take damage. And you saw how on some of your health cards, that could be really bad news. So I'm going to run away. Now, when you run away, you still fan out five. One, two, three, four, five. And as it happens, 
I made the right choice. I could not beat him. I've got my ballroom dress, which provides two wild cards, but um, that wouldn't have given me the three I need. I still needed some cunning or some swords, and I didn't have any. And this is really bad. Um, well, actually, um, Mrs. Claus, I could ignore. Wait, actually, do you get to ignore her when she's in a fan? Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. You can see this zombie was going to do damage to me. Um, in addition to the damage he did when I failed. And so, I don't have to worry about that at all because I ran away. Whenever you run away, all you do is you downgrade one card and ignore anything else that came out. So I downgrade my magic blood, which means it would still be okay. I'd have to downgrade again. Although even if it gets downgraded all the way, it's it's a trapped soul. So it's still not the end of the world. Uh, let's see. And I could download... Or, you know, downgrade my dress, but then it's gone forever. I don't want to downgrade my dress. I could downgrade my fairy wings, which provide me with magic and a heart. And that would turn it into shredded wings, which is a distraction in a heart. Seeing those shredded wings flap around. Hmm. And if it got downgraded again, it would, it, it's uh, a loft by will. Still a distraction, but I get hurt whenever I use it. So I'm going to have to downgrade one of these. Either the magic blood or the fairy wings... I think I will downgrade the magic blood because it really, um, you know, it actually made it better. Before it was just a heart, now it's a heart and magic that might help me in the future. And so that was me running away from the goblin, and it's a good thing I did. All right, and oh, now it's an Etten. He's a level three. I'm a level one. Remember, I said this right up front. As you're exploring, you can sneak past higher level stuff. So I'm just going to sneak past. I could fight him if I wanted, but I'd need six swords or cunning. There's no way that's happening. So I'm just going to sneak on by, and there's a level two orc. I'm going to sneak on by, and now this is not an encounter, so I just go on until I find. It's a forlorn level, also level two. Go on. The evil butler. Uh, go on ahead and skip him. Level two orc. All uh, right. I'm, I must be getting close. Oh, a magically locked door. Now, Level zeros are a special thing that if you run away from them, they will not force you to downgrade. But if I try to open this magic locked door, which means I got a, I, I need to provide a key and a magic. If I fan out five and find those, great, I get to open this door, which would be lovely. But um, I, if I fail, and I'm more than likely to fail, I'll have to downgrade two things and take some damage. So you better believe I'm just going to run away from this magic door. Um, and again, since it's a level zero, when you run from level zeros, you just skip them. You don't have to fan out. There's some fairy dust. And finally, I have made it through my first trip. Now, whenever this comes up, instantly you stop what you were doing. And you put this aside. Well, first of all, you upgrade. I've made it through level one. Now I'm on 2A. I am now level two. All those level twos I got to skip past before, this time I'm going to have to deal with them. And I shuffle the deck, uh, and I have to make sure everything still stays the uh, relative to the way it was before. Very important. Shuffle it up good. So I've now got some cooler items in this deck, but by the same token, I'm going to have to deal with the level twos in here now in addition to the level ones. Unless I can be sneaky and find ways to distract them or what have you. So uh, one more quick shuffle. And then a, sp and then a uh, what do you call it, uh, the deck. And hey, right there at the top is my defeated goblin. All right, and so this goes back to the bottom of the deck. And now I'm going to go through the deck again. And unfortunately, I want him to be in a fan. In a fan, he provides the key. Right here, he provides nothing. He's just a great card. He's not an encounter, so I just start digging until... I find a level two encounter. I gotta fight this orc, everybody. And if I fail, I take two points of damage. Um, now, there's two ways to lose this game. If all of your heart, heart cards throughout the deck get completely wiped away, you'll lose. You'll get you get KO'd. Or if you um, you know, we have several more trips through this deck before we run out of time. A lot of trips, six total trips of Ericol, or is it? Eight, I forget. Uh, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight trips through the deck uh, to actually get strong enough to beat the boss, or in some cases, you might find a secret exit because some of the cards might have secret exits uh, on the back of them. Like, like if uh, if this hair extension was here, hey, I, it could get upgraded to magical braided. But if it got downgraded, it could get turned into a crypt escape. I could, if it get downgraded, I uh, I found a, another way out, and that's another way to win the game. Now I don't know if I have any exits in my deck because I built it randomly and I haven't seen everything that's in there. Um, but I've now got to deal with this orc, and I need any combination four swords or cunning. 
And you better believe I feel pretty cunning, don't I, folks? Let's go on ahead and have the encounter. So we draw five. One, two, three, four, five. And let's see what we got. Hey, there's my upgraded blood magic. There's a cunning. There's two wilds for my staff of power. And I didn't do it! Oh my gosh, how could I fail to do this? This is insane. Oh, well, you know, I had too good a run <laughs> on that first trip through. I mean, nor I mean that I, I should say. That was not my normal experience, how well I did. Uh, it's not at all uncommon the first few times you go through the deck to lose a lot more often than you win. And I've just lost here. Because here's what I could do. I could create a distraction. That means I get rid of one of these cards. Let's go on ahead and do it. I will get rid of the evil consort. And now that means I can bring another card into my hand. Hooray. But it's stupid Prince Charming. If it were the ballroom dress, I'd totally win. But it's Prince Charming who, because he has not been upgraded, all he's going to provide me is a little bit more charisma. That's not helping anything, um, Charming. So, and I don't have any other special powers that are going to help me out here at all. Um, so, I have lost. And that means I'm going to take two damage. Now, one of them is going to be this raw potential. There's no getting around it because... oh. Okay, and in fact, actually, no, both of them. I am not going to dig through the deck because I've got two health cards in my hand. They are both going to get downgraded by one unless Charming gets downgraded because, remember I said this earlier, you always have the option, instead of upgrading or downgrading a card when you have to, you can flip the Savior. So I just brought him into my hand. So i got to take two damage for this loss. Let's go on ahead and flip him. And boom, he now provides extra distractions, but he downgrades a key. I don't have any keys, so I don't particularly mind. That's one of the damage. The other damage has got to be from my raw potential or my blood magic. If it's that, then I'm going to lose that health. So that's no good. Let's go on ahead and downgrade. No! If I downgrade the raw potential, it's totally lost. Well, either way, it's lost. <sighs> If I upgrade, the, so I gotta choose. I'm gonna permanently, or almost all but guaranteed, permanently lose my blood magic. But if I lose this, at least I've still got magic. If I lose the raw potential, I've got nothing. If I keep the raw potential, it could potentially be upgraded into a wild card. Um, I'm going to lose the blood magic. All right. So boom. So now I've lost a hit point. Okay. And let's see here. Right, so that was it. And that was another encounter. Thanks, Charming, for nothing. All right, ballroom dress. All by itself. Can't do anything. That's a bummer. Just got to go away. See it next time. Jewelry case. Also a bummer. Bummer. Keep going. Till tough. It's the butler. He's a level four. I need five um, charm or cunning. I don't, I'm not feeling it. He'd make me de downgrade three cards. No, sir, evil uh, butler guy. All right, keep going. Oh, here I am again. All right, so I'm going to draw five. One, two, three, four, five. And hey, here's an orc I don't have to fight. Okay, and I, I ignored this. This extra point of damage would be done if I lost in an encounter and he was in the fan. But as it is, I'm not having an encounter. I'm taking a breather because I was at the top of the deck, luckily. Now, it could have been that I could have been in the middle of this fan um, in, in the middle of an encounter. Or, But as it is, I get to use her. Once again, I get to do an upgrade on any haste or charm cards. Although, unfortunately... Uh, my bunny slippers have already been upgraded, and I don't have any other haste or charm cards. I don't have any instructions, but oh wait, I do have the basilisk skin purse, so that lets me get one more card into my hand. It's my other cunning, yo. I'm going to upgrade, and so now I have become sly. And, or let's see, don't forget her other power is that she can pick locks. I, so I, she's not going to pick any locks this time. C'est la vie. Uh, the orc was ignored. Anything else I'm doing in here? Nope. So that was perfect. Another door. I need a key into magic. I'm just going to sneak on past it. A level one goblin. Definitely got to deal with this guy. Or, I mean, again, I could discard if I, if I, if I don't think I can beat him. Because um, I know I just got through one of my cunnings. And I, what have I seen? See, this is the thing. You got to remember. Have I seen my dress? I think I have seen my dress. Have I seen that other power-up that gives me the wild cards? I've all, I, think, I think one of my slides... You have to... To make an informed decision here, you have to remember what you've done in the past. Uh, and so, you could cheat. I think it's cheating anyway. And go look backwards. Um, but you're not really supposed to do this. I mean, so I can see how much I've got left. Uh, that's why, again, there's a big... Yeah, so, yeah, all my wild cards are gone. I don't think so. I think I'm just going to run away from him. And so let's see. One, one two, three, four, five. Okay. So uh, because I ran away, 
Oh, Mrs. Claus came up while I'm running away, so I have to take a point of damage as well. No! I don't have to take that damage, but I have to take that damage. Uh, and I still have to discard for running away. Or not discard, downgrade. So I gotta downgrade one of these. Can't downgrade a, uh, a what you call it, uh, treasure. Hmm, downgrade my fairy dust, or my hard toed boots, or my flats. Well, uh, you know, they all have different things. If I downgrade the fairy dust to knee-high boots, I get a lot of charm. And there are characters in here who I could use that charm to get past. Okay, let's do it. Let's downgrade the hand-toed, the hard-toed boots. So now they're knee-high boots, and those are ever so charismatic. That might help me later on with the butler, uh, or, or, or what have you. So that was it, but I also have to take a point of damage. Not his, but the other one. And as you can see, I have no hearts, so now I just gotta dig, and dig, and dig, and dig, and dig. This is letting me skip stuff, but it's also a missed opportunity. I keep digging, oh my gosh, until I found it. This just downgraded to the fairy wings to shredded wings. So that was bad. You can see how taking damage is a very bad thing. It can make you rush through the deck and miss out on opportunities. And now here I am again. I'm going to keep on going until I find another encounter. And that was my second trip through the deck. So now we are on to 2B. And I got to take the deck, shuffle it up again. Again, being careful. Remember, these are all two-sided cards, or most of them are. So being careful not to uh, get them out of order. And I'm making my third trip through the deck. And once again, I'm going to be running a foul of more of the stuff, but hey, if I could, uh, I might be able to... If, so, if the... Now that I've got those knee-high boots that are incredibly charismatic, plus, if I, if I haven't seen those and a couple of my wild cards and the butler shows up, even though he's level 4, I might have a shot at beating him. Which would be insane to beat uh, to beat that crazy butler at this. Anyway, so now we're on to B. And then after B, this goes away. And I'm on 3A, 3B, and then finally 4. But I've still got a while before I get through that. And the game continues. Uh, there goes... Um, oh, no. Oh, shoot. I just did this backwards, didn't I? Yes, I did. Let's try this again. Whoop! And uh, there's Prince Jarming, who I've saved. I remember, got to cut the... And my... Oh, no, the dress is at the top. I waste the dress. And here's a level 2 orc once again. Do I have the cunning and the strength? Chances are I do. I could fight him. If I fail, I take two points of damage. If I run away, I only have to downgrade one, which could be a good thing, depending. And I think I'm going to stop right there, because that should give you a pretty good idea of the gameplay of Maiden's Quest. Now, the only thing I haven't really gone into is the way you play this cooperatively or competitively. And it's interesting. First of all, you must play solo for a while. You have to go through the deck enough times until you finish level 2 and you've made it to the second deck. Once you're in level 3A, 3B, or 3... Or, um... Uh, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, 3C or 4, you can play cooperatively or competitively. And that means this game comes with enough cards to uh, support two players. You can have two princesses with two bosses trying to escape from you know a big old dungeon, tower, what have you. And you, you make the two different decks of cards. Players just sit and play. You just play through the deck like you've seen me do until you eventually make it to level to level three. Then it, players start taking turns. I explore until I have an encounter. And then you explore until you have an encounter, and then I do, and then you do. If we're playing cooperatively, what happens is, when I run into an encounter, I can say, hmm, an orc. You know what? I think I can handle this guy by myself. I know my deck pretty well. Um, but, uh, so I'm just going to go on ahead and draw all five. But if I was playing competitively, and I knew that, oh, it's the butler... I haven't seen my boots yet, but I know you, you're, you're my teammate, are incredibly charismatic. Let's split it. Um, let's work on the butler together, and I'll draw three, because I think i got a good chance of my boots, and you can draw two, and hopefully that'll be enough. We both draw, and we both combine, and we both get the reward, or we, or we split up the panel, or we, we decide who gets the reward, depending on what it is. Uh, although in the case of the butler, it is keys to the castle. Um, and... We uh, also split up whatever the damage might be. So that might be, I can't afford the damage. You have to help me with the butler uh, because maybe I'm level four and I have to deal with him or because I want to try and if I fail, I know you've got a lot of hit points, I don't. So we work together cooperatively. We both pony up towards the five card ante and, and hopefully win together, but we might lose together. Now instead, if you're playing competitively, what happens is when it's your turn, you, you, you get, you, you draw, you draw, you draw, you draw, you draw, you draw, and oh, it's an Enten. And okay. Um, 
in the competitive game, there's kind of a bidding war. I make the opening bid. I say, I could beat this Eden with five cards. And then you, competitively, could say, oh, you know what? Oh, what's his stats? Oh, I could beat him in three. Easy. Because you know your deck, you know what's in there, if you remember everything, if you've got a good memory, and uh, eventually somebody says, beat that Etten, and then you play the normal game. And so, I could basically have my Etten kill stealed from me if my competitive opponents think that they can beat it. It's kind of like a reverse auction, or you know, like name that tune. So that's the way the competitive game works, or the cooperative game works. Uh, and the interesting thing is, you can we can just sit together on the couch and play, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Or we can also play in what's called the serendipity mode, and that's a really interesting thing. That happens when um, you know you're out in the wild somewhere at a convention. You just carry this game around in your pocket. Every once in a while, you you have an encounter or two, and then you just put the decks back in your pocket because this is an incredibly portable game. I can put this in my pocket and bring it back out two weeks from now. What you do is, you take um, these little uh, player aid reminders, you put it on top to remind yourself that this is the top of the deck, this is the bottom of the deck, because they're, they're two-sided cards, and then you can bring it out whenever you want. And if you're in a convention where you know other players are playing this, I'll bring out my deck, and you bring out your deck, and we say, hey, let's do some serendipity. What that means is, if there's some bad guy, like this Eden or the butler, who's just been a real pain in my butt, and I say, you know what, I really need to beat this butler. Can you help me? And you say, well, you know what, yeah, I've got a really charismatic deck. I think I can do it. Then what we can do is we can sit down, we can put aside, we basically pull the exits out, we totally reshuffle the deck, uh, and I bring the butler onto the top, and then we just play an immediate cooperative game just right there. And the interesting thing is um, we have these gift cards, which are not normally part of the game, but the more times you engage in serendipitous behavior with more people, you get to write down their name on these uh, as a reminder of the time that you worked with other players. Uh, whether you win or lo lose, these uh, serendipity cards, or these gift cards, become more and more powerful over time. It's a very, very cool little social... Uh, element that is added to Maiden's Quest that makes it very, very different. Now, again, it's got to be in a rarefied circumstance. I mean, I guess if you're a couples gamer, uh, you, I could just be playing along, playing along, playing a new game. You haven't played for a while, and I say, hey, I really need help with this butler. Do you mind getting out your deck and just help me with him? And then you could have a serendipitous thing right there and then. Um, or, I, obviously, this was designed for parties where a bunch of people have the game. You're like a Maiden's Quest event. Everybody's playing their own thing, and you just kind of meet up people, have you know, two uh, princesses in the night helping each other, and then you move on with a slightly stronger uh, super gift card as a result. That's it, folks. That is Maiden's Quest. Now, if you want to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.